So in this film, we're looking at 16 images where we're looking at the three W's, the where, what, and why. So I'm cheating to begin with, I'm sorry, because the first thing I'm doing is showing you an image of uh, when not to use flash. So I have a saying uh, that basically it's natural light before reflector, reflector before flash, and flash is a last resort. Why? Because basically I want to learn and understand how to use and manipulate the natural light in a scene before I basically start to overpower it with technology. So the first thing uh, when we're using flash, we've got to understand is what is it physically doing? Is it designed or is it being used to actually help control the uh, dynamic and contrast to the light? Well, yes, it is. If it's not being used for that reason, there must be another reason to use the flash instead of just illumination. So on a very, very sunny day, you can see I always light the subjects from behind. And basically, we've got some burnout going on in the shoulder because it's being allowed to actually spill onto a shoulder down the side of the arm and the hand. But I am protecting the face with the body turn and so on. Now... This is a per perfect example where you might just actually leave the speed light direct on camera and point it towards it and it'll just give you illumination of the shadow area. But because I'm taking the exposure from the face, in fact, the exposure is correct. And basically everything else, as I said, is now burning out if it's o over that working exposure on the face. So in fact, this is a case where I'm using a reflector to add the contrast back in or help balance the contrast within the image. So by using a silver reflector, it would pump in a huge amount of light, but it'd probably burn a face off. In other words, it'd be too bright in the eyes. Um, so we'd have to use a white reflector closer to her. That would even steam bright to her on a very sunny day like we are, but that would be a softer use of the light than I actually just revert into a flash gun to fill all the information in. Remember, when a flash is being used on the, si on the single plane, it's going to light ev everything more as it... Uh, reaches the sub uh, the subject than the subject itself so if there was a branch in the way if there was another subject in the way if there was the the dress in the way whatever it is everything is being illuminated before it actually gets to the main part of the image we're trying to uh, light up so i'm not cheating throughout the whole lot i promise you this is the first one though is I only want to use a reflector here because it's quicker and it's more natural. And even though I've got some dynamic um, problems being created by the sun, even the flash is going to struggle to dynamically uh, affect that. So I either need to move location, in other words, move her up the steps into the shadow more, into the shade, the shade more. We can see it's a colder, bluer light at the top, um, but it, at least it would take all the light off her. But as it is to bring out this amazing vibrancy in her expression, I want this actually full on kind of sunlight for the specularity hence in this case there is no flash why because i want it natural i want to shoot fast and that is why i chose the reflector before it so the next image um basically it's um, another reason to perhaps avoid flash but you could use flash but this is a good image for us to explain about uh, two ways to do it so in other words if you are going to use flash on this kind of image we're in uh, a softer light source the light is coming in from behind but if we were to use the speed of uh, the speed light to illuminate first of all make sure you are in TTL and you're in a minus mode. So in other words, you're putting less light in the more light in because all you really want to do is perhaps lift the shadow or bring some de uh, detail alive. Another thing, because of course the camera is in the vertical position here, you want to remember, remember that every time you turn the rotation of the camera, it is also going to give you a new direction to the flash. So if in doubt, when you're shooting this kind of image and you don't want to give a direction to the light source, in other words, if you rotate it in a uh, clockwise direct, uh, direction, um, basically you're going to put the light coming in from the right-hand side with a bounce card. If you rotated the flash to the left-hand side, it would be coming in from an, uh, um, a left-hand side. Obviously, um, the bounce card would actually push the light. So in other words, if I've rotated it in an anti-clockwise way, Basically, I would create a shadow on the right-hand side of the nose. And if I was rotating the camera through the right-hand side, it would create a shadow side on the left-hand side of the nose. So also observe the natural light in the scene to see where the natural shadow is going if you are going to do it. 
if in doubt, shoot it as a horizontal, and I can't believe I'm saying it, but then actually trim it in uh, the likes of the post uh, the post production. But don't get into the habit of that, otherwise your workload is going to go through the roof. Um, but this is an option here of why to use it. I would probably still refer it to a reflector than I would act actually a flash. But this is a scenario a scenario that both things would worth work but remember to underpower the flash otherwise it's going to start to dominate the scene. This image of the girl against the um, graffiti wall. Now this is an image which has a dynamic looking girl, a dynamic looking set. So I want to create a little bit more of a dynamic use of the light. So if we're creating uh, the image using some flash, you can see here um, from the close up of the face, if we just zoom in there just a little bit, we start to see a catch light in the eye, uh, which is being formed. So that is coming in from the left hand side Okay, and you can see that what it's actually doing, it's just blending in with the natural ambient light, but it's got a slight increase in power. So we might only be a third or a, uh, um, two thirds of a stop overexposing the ambient light within a scene. So in other words, if you want more dynamic in a, a scene from the flash, we've got to overpower the ambient more. So um, in other words, if the natural exposure on the girl was say 125th of a second shutter speed at uh, f5.6 and we want to actually make the flash a little bit more dominant than the actual overall scene, then we would meter the flash or TTL it to give us an increase up from 5.6 5 to 6.3 or to 7.2. So one third or two stops more Obviously, the more we overpower the ambient light, the more dynamic the shadow, but more dynamic of the image subject off the background itself. In this case, a shoot, shoot through umbrella or a small softbox is ideal to actually create the image. Same subject now, but we've moved closer in. Now we can start to see that we're increasing the power of the flash or decreasing the amount of the ambient how can we tell that this is flash lit? One of the secrets gives it away is the illumination of the plant on the top left hand side of the photograph here compared to the overall scene. So we can tell that we're using a big light source. In other words, we're increasing the speed light size by either the likes of a softbox or an umbrella to increase the spread of the light, but it still is very, very soft and it's dynamic to give us the look and feel. Now, if I wanted to stop illuminating the uh, fo uh, foliage on the top left, and if I didn't want to affect the stomach area of the client uh, more, I could use a smaller soft box and I could even use a gridded box to control the light more. But in this case, we're, o we're over um, lighting the, am uh, the ambient light by a good stop to create more depth and shadow. And you can tell that from the shadow side of the arm here, Okay, compared to the highlight side on the other side, we are creating a dynamic from the flash and it's not using much of the ambient. Next shot here of the bride and groom. Uh, basically, we're using just flash on camera to just fill in the bottom of the dress, the bottom of the trousers as well, but it's really being used as fill rather than the amount. So again, once more, this could be either used in the bounce or the catch light card. It could be even directional, but it's setting would be set to around about one stop to two stops less than the ambient within the scene, because I'm not looking to give full illumination, just fill in some of the detail. Here, um, we're using uh, light from above the sub uh, the subjects and behind. We're working on high speed sync to dramatically drop those background clouds down. And you can see the multiple flash units creating the more dynamic. And what we've got here is a complete overpower of the, am of the ambient. So in other words, if we really want to create dynamic, we have to overpower the ambient by two stops. A real overpower in the ambient would be with three stops as a maximum. Any more than that, basically everything is pitch black. But also what we want the flash to do is not just illuminate the subjects in this case, but also to spill a little bit onto the likes of the steps 
to, to show that they're on a, a staggered um, setting and not just a stage area. So by o overpowering it, here we're using a large soft a soft box with grids to control the power and the, illu uh, the illumination in a, a very dynamic way. In this shot, we're creating small little pockets and pools of light to blend and mix together. So in other words, we're slightly um, giving some flash color gel to all the lights so we can start to use the tungsten setting in color balance. So any light coming through the windows is bluer. And you can see in the background, we've got a hanging red dress. Um, you can't see as well, but there's a, a flash hidden uh, behind to actually illuminate the back of the dress, but to not show it in the reflection of the mirror. So we've got a dress with some illumination, but we're allowing the natural light to mix together with the speed light to kind of create the overall effect. So why are we using um, uh, the light? It's to add some separation and more dynamic through bringing the shadow areas or some elements alive. And that is, is the reason for the why as well. And of course, um, uh, where we you, are we using it is just to make sure that it's hidden out of the, sub, uh, the subject, but with no flash falling onto the subject itself. Next shot here, we've got a simple speed light on a stand. It's in TTL mode. It is just running uh, to e equal the exposure. However, what we've done is we've used the zoom setting on the flash to fake it. So in other words, we're, we're using a wide angle lens, but we're actually telling the flash that we're using the lights of a, a 105 lens. And so it's zooming in the flash into a smaller pocket. So we get this natural vignetting within the scene. And if you can actually squint at the image, you'll see that there's a rectangle style of light um, which mimics a, ver a vertical speed, a speed light, and that's because we've zoomed it in. So where is it placed? It's placed um, high to drop the shadow down on the nose of the subject. It's positioned at the near eight o'clock position from camera. It's positioned to drop the shadow, but also to increase the shadow, and it's used in the vertical position to give me an illumination to light the whole panel instead of the normal horizontal. This next image is uh, using uh, LEDs in fact, but it's a good excuse to actually talk about speed light. Um, in this case, we're using light from the 11 o'clock position and two o'clock position, no other light. The room am ambient light is obviously giving us some illumination to the front side of her, but really the exposure is being set by the LEDs or as we're explaining flash, it's coming in at two stops brighter than the am ambient. So in other words, if the ambient was F4, we're actually using the flash to actually control the exposure two stops more so we would actually meter up to F8. In fact, that's not true. Why? It's because this is where we use the shutter speed instead of the aperture in increase to darken the light. So in other words, we can still set the uh, speed lights to the lights of F4, which is the ambient light, but if the ambient light in the room is a 30th of a second, by shooting higher shutter speeds, we can control the dynamic and the illumination within the room. So in other words, the ambient light. So if I go to a 60th, basically the ambient light is one stop less. If I go to 125th of a, se a second, the ambient light is two stops less. If I was to go to 200th of a, se a second, basically, the, um, uh, the ambient would be almost non-existent because it would be three stops less. Again, once more, if I was looking to mimic the LED light with the speed lights, as I'm explaining here, all I'd be doing is using grids or basically zoomed in speed lights to actually control to create the specularity of the lighting. Again, speed light being used just off camera, coming through the actual, um, uh, just above the banister to the right hand side. So it looks like a natural illumination coming in from the window. But because this is a winter wedding, basically, uh, and it's it, we're giving the whole set the illumination. There's no ambient light in here. So there's several speed lights going off to make sure that we get this good spread of the light. So in this case, it's about control of the spillage of the speed light rather than basically um, 
um, allowing all the little kind of pockets uh, to actually just illuminate the whole scene. So we're not looking for big light, we're looking for lots of little small lights. The next shot here, to create more dynamic, we're just using a speed light behind the, sub, uh, the subject. We're using it on the floor, but we're bouncing it up to hit the ceiling behind him, bouncing it a little bit towards us to give us this front direction, and hence we get this great silhouette kind of feeling uh, and giving us more energy in the light. You can see because of all the steel work in the front that it's picking up some of the light, but there's no extra light illuminating that. So when we're working on location in a client's home, or in this case in studio, we could use a light behind the subject, in this case with a zoom, a slight zoom to the flash, and a gel on the background, or we could be using a red background itself to give a great silhouette. So controlling the spillage of the light, why? To give dynamic, to em emphasize the pregnancy bump, and to obviously give us coloring, whether it's with paper or gel. Next shot here is probably the simplest one where we're looking at an unlit white surface behind her, but we're using the lights of a softbox to the right hand side to give us dynamic and the shadowing on the left. But uh, so that is coming in from the uh, three to four o'clock position, but it's always in the height to give a catch light at around about the two o'clock position in the eye. And then what we've got is a secondary light source, in this case with a grid, whether it's an actual honeycomb grid or a, a gridded soft softbox, it's whatever you have. And that is actually designed to give some separation to the hair, as well as down the side of the uh, left-hand side of the body. And that, and that would be set between one stop and two stops less than the working aperture, so it doesn't overpower the light. Remember the saying, the light from behind appears twice as bright. So in other words, the reflected light coming off the hair, coming off the chest, if it was equal to the working aperture of the main light, it would actually increase its intensity as it reflects towards us, increasing its brightness. This shot here, we're using the simple shoot through umbrella above the subject with a simple speed light going, uh, one speed light going towards him. And then you, you can see just in the catch light of the eye, we've got another catch light as well, which means there's a reflector being used to bounce in the light upwards. So this simple one light technique with and without a reflector will guarantee quite dynamic head headshots, but it will increase the amount of shadow below the chin um, if it's very, very close up and if the, uh, um, the umbrella is very, very small. So again, as a rule, you want to use around about a half a meter size of umbrella as a minimum, if not a little bit bigger than that, to allow a bigger spread of the light, bigger spread of the light, the softer the light. So where, where is it? Immediately above camera with my, my lens just below it, as it were. Um, it's a shoot through umbrella and it's there to actually give it the one light technique. But as I said, I am using a reflector to just pop the little bit of light up. So with a similar technique here, we can use the light directly from above him. So whether it's softbox or umbrella will give you a very, very similar result. A softbox, as it we're seeing here, will control the uh, spillage uh, from just flying all over the place. So in other words, it would light the shoes fully, it would light the front of the leg a little bit more, it would even light the background. That is why we wanna use the likes of a soft, a soft, soft box, preferably a soft box with a grid, but then we can also use secondary light sources to use a separation as we're seeing here. There's a light coming in from the uh, two o'clock position to add a separation. We can see that along the side of the face to actually give a little bit more dynamic. So we can see there's no extra third light coming in from the 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock position uh, because there's no actual extra catch light coming down the side or down the side of the leg. Next shot here, we've got a light coming in from both sides. Uh, we're not interested in the, sub, uh, the subject's face being lit because we're trying to give a little bit more kind of menacing. So both of these lights are coming in from the nine o'clock and the three o'clock position. And we can actually control the amount of um, a hatchet lighting effect by just move, uh, moving the client towards camera or further away from camera and turning the body and the head in the different positions to drastically change the look and the feel. So if you're looking a little bit more edginess to the light, don't be afraid to go for a nine o'clock and a three o'clock position, preferably with smaller soft boxes or strip boxes, otherwise you're gonna end up lighting the whole background. 
as we're seeing here, this is a black background. It is a bigger light, light source. They are umbrellas. They are light, uh, lighting up the whole scene, but we're actually controlling the depth and shadow on his face by bringing him closer to the camera position. So, hope you enjoyed those quick shots and the explanation of where, what, and why.